What's going on everyone? Liz here from Learn Robotics and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take a potentiometer reading and map it to a micro servo. This is useful if you've got a project where you want some manual control or tuning or you want to be able to take readings and convert them from one set of values to another set of values. So let's go ahead and bring in our Arduino and breadboard and we'll get this circuit wired up. This is a fairly simple and straightforward configuration, although if you are new to Arduino, I highly recommend checking out our Arduino for Beginners course, where we go in detail on how to actually create circuits, how to use a breadboard, and the basics behind electronics. If you're interested in that, check out the link in the description below if you're on YouTube, or find the link inside the article if you're watching this on Learn Robotics. All right, let's go ahead and find ourselves a angular potentiometer. I'm going to bring that onto the breadboard. I'm just going to change this to 10K, wire up both of the, mic the wiper blades, and then we'll send a signal into the analog input on the Arduino. Go ahead and send that down. We'll just go ahead and use A2. And that looks pretty good. Now we need to get a micro servo, and I'm just going to rotate this around just so that it's a little bit easier to wire this in. And we'll go ahead and just send these wires over and adjust the colors, just like that. And finally, the signal. I'm gonna make this, let's make it blue. All right, so now we just need to map these guys down to where they belong. That looks good. And this I'm going to send to pin 3. You can use any of the PWM enabled pins um, on the digital output on the Arduino. Let's go ahead and open up a code editor. We're going to switch that over to text. Hit continue. All right, let's get rid of all this stuff. So in order to use the micro servo, we're going to need to use the servo class. So we'll just go ahead and include it and then also create a servo object. And we'll also define our potentiometer on pin, let's see, A2. We'll go ahead and set up our method and our system. So we've got a pin mode. The potentiometer is an input. We've got the servo attached to pin three. And we might as well just initialize the serial monitor because it will be helpful to print out some of our readings later. And if this, like I said, seems fairly foreign to you or is confusing as to how fast I'm going, please check out our Arduino for Beginners course. I spend a lot of time going in depth on how to wire into breadboards, how to interface hardware with software within Arduino, and some quick ways of getting started with all of this. So don't feel like you can't learn it. It is like a few steps that you have to kind of get down. It's a process you have to learn. But once you understand how things interface with each other, it starts to become very second nature and you can start writing code just like this. So once we have everything set up, we want to gather readings from the potentiometer. Ideally, we want to be able to rotate this potentiometer. And as we're rotating it, this micro servo will also rotate to corresponding positions. And so what we're going to need to do is create a method that will read the position of the potentiometer and based on that reading, we will return a value. And so let's go ahead and create it. It's going to be called int read pot. And what we want to do is get a reading, which is going to be an analog read from the potentiometer. And then we want to be able to return that value. So we'll just return the reading. And I think it's a good idea if we just make this reading a global, okay? So now that we've got the basis of that, it's pretty straightforward. One interesting little spin though, is we don't necessarily want to keep returning readings if the reading is the same. Because ideally what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this to a position and we're probably gonna just leave it there. So it doesn't really make sense to keep running this over and over and over again and keep resetting this value if it's the exact same value. So I'm gonna create a um, local variable called current and we're gonna just use this to keep track of where we're at. So basically if we are the, if we are not 
the same as our current value, then we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and get another reading. And if we are the same, we're just going to skip this. So we'll go ahead and we'll move this inside of here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the reading equal to the current, and that'll break us out of the loop. And that way we're not running this method continuously over and over and over. We can just run it when things are different. So I'm just going to give this a little comment. This is basically to get the current reading from the potentiometer. And this reading is going to be a 10-bit reading, which is 0 to 1024, or 0 to 1023. It's in the, it's in the range of 0 to 1023. There's 1024 readings total, if that makes sense. So that looks pretty good. Now that we have the actual value of what we are going to um, take as our input, we want to be able to translate that over to our servo motor and map that to a position. So let's go ahead and create another method called map servo. And this is actually going to take a position, which is from the potentiometer. So what we want to do is create another global variable called number. This is going to hold our mapping. We can use the map method of our position that we give it. And that's going to go 0 to 1023 to the new range, which is 0 to 280. Or if your micro server is 270, you can go 0 to 270. It's really just dependent on what type of motor you're using and the range of that rotation. So then once we have that position, we can go ahead and actually send that to the servo motor by doing a write command using the position being this number. And then I like to throw in just a 50 millisecond delay so that we can reach that position. And let's close it off. We also need to define number. So let's go ahead and add that in. And that looks pretty good. Great. So the next thing, let me go ahead and just add this as a little note so that as you're reading this you understand what, what this does. This basically will take a position and set the servo in the correct range. So what we're doing is we're grabbing that 0 to 1023 reading and we're actually mapping it in the range of 0 to 180. And then once we have that new mapped number we are going to write that position in the range of 0 to 180 to our servo motor. And this is the actual method that sets the position of the servo. All right, so now what we need to do is add in our loop. You can't have an Arduino program without a loop method. This is what execute on the, executes on the board. So we'll go ahead and we'll call map servo, and we're going to give it the read potentiometer. So read the read pot method as our position. And that's basically it. Now, we don't have any printouts, we don't have any um, kind of like luxury things added to this code, but if you, let's, let's go ahead and run this, you'll see that we've got basically everything we need um, to get going. So let me see, position is actually, let's just call this position. And so what you can do is compile up the code, get it running, and as you can see, when we rotate this potentiometer, we can start rotating the servo motor, and it works basically as we expect it to. Uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting about doing this, though, is actually seeing the numbers um, through the serial monitor, what you're getting as a position on your potentiometer versus what you're getting as an output for your servo, servo motor. And so to do that, we're going to add in some write statements using the serial monitor. And we can do that actually inside of loop. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to create another variable called the new position. New position. And new position is actually going to be the value that we get from read potentiometer. So new pause equals read pot. And I'm going to go ahead and just replace that as the input parameter. And then what we can do is we can check to see if our current mapping is the same as new position. And if it is, we don't need to print anything out again because the numbers haven't changed. 
But if they're different, then we'll print out some readings to our serial monitor and we can kind of see what that representative change is and how that mapping looks when we go from 0 to 1023 to 0 to 180. So let's go ahead and set up a conditional so we can go current map does not equal the new position. We can go ahead and say that serial dot print, which is how we write stuff to the serial monitor. We can just say pot position equals, and then we can use that variable print, and that's going to be our new position. And then we've also want to print out the servo angle, which will be serial dot print, and we'll give it a space servo angle. And then we can see what that mapping actually looks like in calculation. And then we can do a print line and we can just do the number that we move to. And that number is actually set up in here. So it's the same number there of our mapping. And then at the end, we want to make sure that we set them equal to each other. So that way that condition is fulfilled and we're not repeating ourselves unnecessarily. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and run that, make sure everything compiles. Looks like we've got to add in the current map. Don't forget to add that as your global. Go ahead and run that. And then we can open up our serial monitor and we can see where we're kind of at right now. As we rotate this, we're getting various angles. So at zero, we should be at zero. Let's go up to here, which is about halfway through, should be about 90. And then we've got 180, so that looks just about right. Yep, so there would be center, here would be all the way to the left. So now you can kind of see like how we take an input reading from a potentiometer across a large range and scale that down to map to a smaller range so that we can represent various angles on a servo motor and have that kind of dynamic control. So through this uh, video, I showed you how to set up your potentiometer and micro servo motor. We're taking an input from a rota rotational potentiometer, say that seven times fast. We're taking that from a rotational potentiometer, mapping a value from zero to 1023, in the range of 0 to 180 so that we can control a micro servo motor. This is helpful if you're planning on tuning servos or if you're trying to figure out what positions are great for your application. You can whip up a project like this and try it out. Or if you want to get user input information, this allows you to dynamically change the value without having to hard code anything. You can print out values, you can see how they're mapped in the range, and then run some tests on the fly. I hope this was helpful for you. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already. And check out our blog on learnrobotics.org for more awesome tutorials on how to do things using electronics, programming, and robotics. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and I'll see you next time.